Welcome back to the channel, this is your boy Kamal once again, and today we have an interesting infinite series. So we have the sum from k equals 1 to infinity, so it's the sum over the positive integers k, of negative 1 to the k times the sine of k, otherwise known as sinc, divided by k cubed. And we're going to solve this using two different techniques. First, I'm going to show you a solution using Fourier series, and then we're going to use some nice tricks from complex analysis. And I'm going to let you guys be the judge of whatever technique worked better over here. Although technically speaking, both these methods are equally fine for solving a problem like this one. Whatever method you found cooler in application. Now, I personally am a fan of complex analysis, so I would always, I'm always inclined to say that the complex analysis version was way cooler, but there's always something quite attractive in applying a Fourier series to solve a problem. So yeah, these two are pretty close, but I'm still gonna say that the complex analysis version really takes the win in this case, but again, Comment down below whatever you liked better. So we'll start with the Fourier series method. The Fourier series for a function f of x on the interval negative l to positive l can be expanded as follows. So we have f of x equal to a naught by 2 plus the sum over the positive integers k of a sub k times the cosine of k pi x divided by l plus another sum over the positive integers k again of b sub k times the sine of k pi x over l. Now for the purpose of our problem, we're going to take the function f of x defined as x cubed, and we'll take l here equal to pi. Now that means we have x cubed equal to a naught by 2, terribly sorry about that, plus the sum over k of a sub k times the cosine of the pi's cancelling out, meaning that we have k times x, plus the sum over k again, of b sub k times the sine of kx. Now, how exactly do we work out these coefficients? Well, they're defined as follows. a sub k is defined as 1 over l, here being pi, times the integral from negative l to positive l, of f of x times, in this case, the cosine of kx, dx, and this of course is valid for k being not negative, so we'll recover a naught as well as the other a sub k's, and we have b sub k defined as 1 by pi times the integral from negative to positive pi of f of x times, in this case, the sine of kx dx. Now notice first up that f of x equal to x cube is an odd function and cosine is an even function. So in this case, for the case of a sub k, we have an integral over, we have an, we have an integral of an odd function over a symmetric interval. So that means we have a sub k being equal to zero, and now all that's left is to evaluate b sub k. So b sub k equals one by pi times the integral from negative to positive pi of x cubed times the sine of k times x, dx, which can be worked out quite easily using integration by parts. So we'll differentiate the x cubed function and integrate the sine of kx term. So that means on the differentiation side, we have first 3x squared, followed by 6x, followed by 6. And then we have, what exactly over here? We have cosine of kx by k, then we have a negative sine, and then we have negative sine kx by k squared. Then of course we would have cosine kx by k cubed. Okay, that makes perfect sense. And what exactly are we doing? We're integrating over negative to positive pi. And we're integrating what's an even function. We know that sine and x cubed are odd functions, so multiplying them gives us an even function. So we could just take twice the value of the integral from 0 to pi of x cubed times the sine of kx dx. And we have these alternating plus and minus signs. So for the first term, notice that we have, as x approaches 0, we would get a 0. And for x approaching pi, we get something useful. So that's cool. We're going to write this as b sub k, sorting out to uh, this whole thing is not going to be completely 0. We have negative 
pi cubed times the cosine of k times pi divided by k. Then we have this plus sign, so that's plus. Now as x approaches zero, we get a zero, and as x, and as x approaches pi, we have sine of k times pi, which is a zero anyway, so we're good. we've gotten rid of this term. And over here, again, we have a nice cosine term over here. So again, that is pretty cool. And we're going to have to do one more integration. One more, because we still have that negative 6 to take care of. So we would have sine of kx divided by k cubed. But of course, that does not matter, because again, we would have a 0 over here as well, because the sine term goes to 0 as x approaches 0 as well. And the only term we have left is this positive sign of 6 times pi times the cosine of k times pi divided by what exactly are we getting? We have k cubed. This is cool. Now, what exactly is the cosine of k times pi that I can factor out as well? That is useful once again. So we have cosine of k times pi times negative pi cubed by k plus 6 pi by k, k cubed. And the cosine of k times pi would be what exactly? So we have cosine k times pi. When k equals 1, we have a negative 1. And when k equals, uh, okay, k equaling odd integers means negative 1. So we do have negative 1 to the k. That should work out perfectly fine. Yes, indeed it does. So that means b sub k equals negative 1 to the k times pi factored out, and we can factor out a k term as well, and we're left with negative pi squared plus 6 by k squared. Okay, cool. Next up, notice that I've made a terrible mistake. This is not b sub k. This was all the evaluation of this integral that I'm going to call i sub k, and 2 by pi times i sub k would be the required b sub k. So that means I'm going to have to do some renaming here we have i sub k and here also we have i sub k and this implies that b sub k would be 2 by pi so we get 2 by k times negative 1 to the k times negative pi squared plus 6 divided by k squared as the required b sub k now recall that x cubed equaled all the a sub k's have gone to zero and we're left with b sub k times sine x so we have the sum, again, terribly sorry about that. We have the sum over k of b sub k, which is 2 by k, or this is just a factor of 2. We have negative 1 by k, uh, negative 1 to the k divided by k times negative pi squared plus 6 divided by k squared times the sine of k times x. So let me just expand this a little bit. We have the sum over k. 2 times the sum over k of negative 1 to the k divided by k times pi squared, which is just another constant multiple term. So I can write it, oh, terribly sorry about that, over here. Pi squared times sine of k times x plus 6 times the sum over the positive integers k of negative 1 to the k times sine of k times x divided by k cubed, which is very similar to the infinite series we require. The only difference being we needed one sink over there, and over here we have the plural sinks. That was a horrible joke. I'm not kidding. That was absolutely horrible. I should definitely stop talking and get back to math right now. Anyway, so we need x to be equal to 1 so that we have sine of k or sink. And we also have this other infinite series. What the hell is this thing? Uh-huh. Well, it's very easy to see, and if not easy to see, it's extremely easy to verify that this is actually the Fourier series expansion of the function x by 2 on the interval negative pi to pi. That means what we have is pi squared times x plus 12 times the sum over k of negative 1 to the k times sine of kx divided by k cubed, and on the left-hand side we have x cubed, and the required case is x equal to 1. Now plugging in this value of x gives us 1 equal to pi squared plus 12 times the required sum, 
And this implies that our sum equals 1 minus pi squared divided by 12, which is a pretty cool looking result. And that was a very cool solution development. It, there was even a Fourier series within the Fourier series. But now for method number two involving some beautiful complex analysis. We'll start off by expanding the sine function here the way we would use in complex analysis. And that is sine of x equals e to the i x minus e to the negative i x divided by 2i. And this implies that s here equals 1 by 2i times the sum over the positive integers k of negative 1 to the k times e to the i times k minus e to the negative i times k divided by k cubed. And now using the linearity of the summation operator, we have 1 by 2i times the sum over k of negative e to the i to the k divided by k cubed minus the sum over k of negative e to the negative i to the k divided by k cubed. And what on earth is that? Now, I could just deus ex machina this and say that it results in negative, uh, it results in 1 minus pi squared divided by 12, but that's no fun. And besides, you guys know that I'm that guy who likes to spam special functions, so here's a special function for y'all. It's the trilogarithm. Now, the trilogarithm of a complex number z can be expanded as an infinite series for absolute value z being less than or equal to 1. So we have z divided by, no, it's z to the k divided by k cubed, where k here runs from 1 to infinity. And this implies that the sum s is actually 1 by 2i times the trilogarithm of negative e to the i minus the trilogarithm of negative e to the negative i which you could say is a nice way to just end the problem, and I could leave the final expression of the answer in terms of, you know, what we worked out before as homework, but again, that's not very fun. There's a very nice sort of reflection formula for the trilogarithm that I should prove in a future video or write-up, so stay tuned for that. So we have trilog negative z minus trilog negative 1 by z. In this case, we have e to the i as well as, as well as its reciprocal, that is 1 by e to the i. So this works out perfectly for our case. And this is supposed to equal negative log cube of z divided by 6 minus pi squared times the logarithm of z divided by 6. So in this case, we have z being equal to e to the i. So for our case, we have s equal to 1 by 2i times uh, what exactly would be the logarithm of e to the i? Well, that would be i, right? So that means we have negative i cubed divided by 6 minus pi squared times i divided by 6. And what exactly is i cubed? i cubed would be negative 1 times i, which is, of course, negative i. So we can factor out an i here, have 2 over here. We're left with 1 by 6 minus pi squared by 6. And there was an i in the denominator as well, some cancellation. This implies that s here equals 1 minus pi squared by 12. And I really did enjoy the second solution development, mostly because of, well, you know, special functions and all that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Comment down below whatever technique you liked more. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do drop me a follow on Instagram. And in case you learned something, you like the effort I'm putting out, then consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Thank you so much, you guys. I'll see you next time.